What up dudes? It's Gaz and welcome back to the Warframe video. So today we're talking about the Bronco and Carnon. I never ended up picking this thing for like the last two months. I finally got it and I actually like it quite a bit. So we'll be showing it against high level steel path enemies today and basically just showing what it does and all that kind of stuff you'd expect from a Carnon review video. Before we get into it, make sure you're sub to the YouTube channel you're watching right now. We do daily Warframe video uploads covering all the strongest gear. Farming guides, news videos, etc., etc. So you're in the right place for Warframe content. Also check out the live stream channel. I do live streams of Warframe quite often. And we test things like this and do gameplay just like you'll see in this video on stream. Now that that's over, let's go ahead and show what the Bronco Incarnon does. This thing is going to be very similar to the Lado Incarnon, where once it gets a couple headshots and builds the Incarnon meter, the special attack it gets is a chaining shot that will hit multiple enemies at a time. So we get some headshots. It's kind of hard to build headshot uh, meter with this thing because it does so much damage. Even against level multiple thousand steel path, you overkill them so hard with some of the builds I'm showing today that you can't even build Incarnate meter off of them. So now that we've gotten some headshots, we charge up our meter, we activate the Incarnate mode, and it goes from a single target shotgun to a multi-target shotgun with a lot of impact damage. Now there's a mod in this game called Hemorrhage, which means, or which makes it whenever you proc an impact uh, status, will make it where he becomes a slash status sometimes too. So as you can see, we're already getting a million plus slash proc damage with this build. Um, this is before I throw on like every multiplier that we can jam on it because this is a steel path build. We're gonna be showing some serious, serious damage. Like I was one shotting level nine 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 Eximus enemies with this weapon in one bullet, as I stated. So. It's pretty powerful. We'll go over all the Incarnon choices, but what I've got right now, we've got Speeding Bullet, Kinetic Battle, and Commodore's Fortune. We're using Ash Prime. The reason we're using Ash Prime, I'll explain a little bit, but basically his passive gives you increased slash damage, and uh, this thing is doing so many slash procs that it actually is quite helpful. So let's go over all the Incarnon choices, and I am using a Riven in here. We'll talk about what you should go for on a Riven as well in this video. So as far as the Incarnon options on the Bronco Prime, uh, we've, of course, got the first one you have to pick, which is get headshots to build up the charge, and then it gives incre increased range and ricochet to nearby enemies. On Tier 2, there's two choices. So Speeding Bullet's the one we got in the video. It gives 30 base damage. When your sprint speed is 1.2 or higher, you get increased projectile speed, too. Don't worry about that second part. It's more about that 30 base damage that will always be active. We do have 1.2 uh, strip speed on Ash Prime, but don't worry about it, honestly. The projectile speed does not matter. Uh, and as far as infused shots, this one is the one I did not go with. Increases base damage by plus 16, so it's like half the other one. Every 50 energy spent increases damage by plus 9 for 10 seconds, stacked to the four times. If that's a playstyle you're willing to go for, feel free. But uh, I don't want to have to be like remembering which timer I have increased damage on. So I'm just going to stick with the 30 damage all the time, uh, because that's just a lot easier to keep track of. And also, the sprint speed is technically available on this build. For Tier 3, I did go with Reduced Recoil. Uh, the other choices are Plus Accuracy, and I believe that one's Plus Magazine Size. This thing reloads a lot, so if you don't if you don't have any problems with the recoil on this thing, go with the Plus Magazine Size, as it has a 4-round magazine at base. For the final two, you actually got some good choice. We went with Commodore's Fortune for increased base crit chance by 20%. Uh, this is a red crit slash proc build, and we'll show the stats on the, the setup in a little bit here. But yeah, this is probably the best choice here, even though the other ones are really, really good. Other choices are enough for everyone. It gives 80% ammo efficiency when six enemies are within six meters, two conditional, and plus two multi-shot and rain of lead. Sounds pretty good, but this thing has low crit chance at base, so we're increasing the crit chance a lot. And it lets us get crazy stats like this. 221% crit chance, 10.3 multiplier, 129% status chance per projectile. So showing why why we have such ridiculous stats on here, uh, we're actually going to be... This is a pretty particular build, honestly. So you've got Hemorrhage, which makes it where impact procs become slash procs. We have no elementals on this build. So as you can see right here, pretty much all impact damage on the Incarnon shot and the primary shot, technically, too. So we've got that. We've got uh, Crit Mod. So we've got the special Crit Mod here. We've got Prime Pistol... Or rather, Prime Target Cracker for increased crit damage, which is very important here. But here's the important one right here. Creeping Bullseye. Gives us minus fire rate, uh, but plus crit chance. It gives us a little bit more crit chance than Prime Pistol Gambit, but usually the minus fire rate is not worth it. But it is worth it here, because we read how hemorrhage works. The chance to become a slash proc on impact is increased when the fire rate of the weapon is below 2.5. And the fire rate on this is 2.4 with this minus fire rate mod. So if you took that off, it would be 
Three fire rate, so you have to run this to get that double chance for slash. Very, very important part of this build. Running Creeping Bullseye over uh, Pistol Gambit. It would, it would be, you know, technically better fire rate, but we don't care about that here. Galvanized Shot, very good for endurance runs. Gives you tons of damage on the enemy. We have so much status chance, too, so they'll be getting lots of procs. It'll only be Impact Puncture Slash, but yeah, we'll get procs Marcito as well. Galvanized Diffusion on kill gives you increased multi-shot. Expel Grenier, we need a Grenier level 10,000 mission. That's why you run the Bane mod for Grenier. And Dizzying Rounds, the exclusive mod for the Bronco. Shots within 8 meters will stun enemies and open up for finishers. Pretty nice. Um, it's very anti Eximus. This is a very anti Eximus gun we're using here. And that massive stash increase does affect the Incarnon shot too. So we're getting lots of slash procs with this. And the Riven is status chance, crit damage, crit chance, and plus weapon recoil. Another reason why I'm running the minus recoil in big, or, uh, Incarnon. So let's, this lets us get red crits and lots of impact procs, making it a slash monster. For the uh, the Exilus slot, I've only got capacity to put on Lethal Momentum right now, but i probably put on Eject Magazine in the future or something else. Just pretty much Lethal uh, Momentum just gives you more projectile speed, but we can only shoot them within 8 meters anyway with dizzying rounds to get that finisher. So it's, it's not that big of a deal. Whatever you want to put on here. In, in If I was to run an Endurance mission again, I'd probably put on Suppress to make it a silencer because I was playing Ash in the footage. And we wanted to make sure that you don't get seen by Ash or heard while you're playing Ash. You've got secondary dexterity on melee kill. It gives us increased damage. And we're using the Glaive Prime. Very good for level 10,000 missions, getting AOE ad clear out. Get a couple kills of this thing. It gives us our stacks of our uh, Bronco. And we can just one-shot next miss right after that. The Cedo is the CO proc we use in the footage. And it's just lets us get viral procs in the enemies. Uh, mostly viral here. So let's go ahead and show some footage here. I'm also going to, in the simulacrum, show you how this works. So I'm playing Ash Prime right now. If you remember some of my old Ivara videos, you might know about snapshotting Eclipse. So the ability of Eclipse from Mirage will give you either a big damage buff or a big damage reduction buff. Uh, as far as enemies shooting you, you take less damage or you output more damage. The idea of this is you want to be casting Eclipse uh, and then going invisible while you are in bright light. If you're in bright light when you cast uh, the invisibility skill while Eclipse is up, you will have your damage buff, and the damage buff stays active. So as you can see right here, top right corner, 260% damage buff. If I was to move around, it will become a damage reduction. See, 75% damage reduction. If I go invis while we're in the light, we will keep that light buff even in the dark. So that's something that has been in the game forever. It just I don't really use it too often, but it's quite nice if you're trying to get big, big damage. Now that we have our buffs going, we're going to go over there and jump on them with some of these attacks. Okay. So as you can see, they're already just getting completely annihilated. And yeah, that's not too bad. Now look, since Ash has such low invisibility duration, you're going to need to recast it quite often. But you can recast Eclipse while you're invisible and, and maintain your buff. So not that big of a deal there. So with a couple of our buffs active, a 6 million slash proc... The, the, one of the highest slash procs I saw in the footage that we're going to be showing here is, uh, I think, like 44 million damage slash proc. And I doubt that was with every buff even active. So that's the idea of the, vid, uh, the build today. Let's get some Steel Path gameplay and explain what you could do here if you wanted to try this out yourself. So we were on Steel Path, Void Cascade. And these are at level, I think they're like level 2600 right now. We did end up going to level 10,000. I'll put some level 10,000 footage. But as you saw, one shot a level 2600 Thrax with the Bronco. So... Yeah, the Bronco is a lot stronger than I was expecting. Uh, now, it might be partially because I'm running such a ridiculous loadout, but also, you know, what am I supposed to run a weak loadout when I'm playing a Steel Path Endurance mission? So the way I'm looking at this is this is very good for single target. It may be a multi-target Incarnon shot, but at the same time, if I'm using a, an AoE weapon, I'd probably not use the Bronco. Some of the big weaknesses of this weapon are the fact that it has to reload so often. Like, when you're using the non-Incarnon shot to build up your meter for the Incarnon shot, it's for the magazine. And I think it's like a two-second reload, so really, really bad. And as far as additional reload sources from other places, you don't really have as many reload options in this game as you would hope. And also, reload speed in this game just affects the reload animation. It doesn't actually, like, really speed it up that much. Uh, so, I'd say if you want to use this for endurance, just keep in mind that you're going to be reloading it quite often. That's why I say maybe the synth mod set on my companion to auto-reload could be nice. But also, it does not auto-reload the Incarnon shot, so just deal with it, honestly. Um, it's also not as good for Corpus, I'd, I'd say, because we are a very slash proc-focused build right here. And Corpus shield regen will kind of 
offset that slash proc that we're doing so much damage with. But yeah, as you can see, we're having basically no problem at all, one-shotting level, 2,000 plus steel path. Uh, let's actually go a little bit later in the mission try to find some level 10,000 enemies here. All right. So this should be around level 10,000 right here. Um, yeah, so Ash Prime is like the, one of the gods of endurance. Why is he so good for endurance missions? The big thing is the fact he can go invisible and also his passive gives him increased slash proc damage. Since we're relying on slash proc so highly in this build... The combination of Eclipse, Damage Buff, Snapshot, and when we go Invis, and the combination of Ash's passive is just really, really strong and nasty for these types of armored Grenier enemies. And there's a level 10,000 Grenier right there. About two shots. I probably would have killed him one shot if I didn't miss the first one. Normal level 10,000 Grenier, one shot. So, highly recommend this thing. Um, now, how much of this is the Riven? I will admit that if I didn't have a good Riven for this thing, I would probably not be using it. It's fun and, and powerful. But also, at the same time, I have so many weapons like this. Like, I could just be using the Latum right now. Latum doesn't do as many slash procs, but at the same time, it's also just... It could burst these guys down really fast. And here's what it looks like when you have any stacks. Yeah, this is what a normal... Would, normally would look like. If I was to throw some stacks on there, he'd be getting one shot. So, that's going to be partially what you need. Um, you need dexterity stacks. You need to get, uh, you know, headshots for... Or you need to get normal kills for your galvanized stacks and all that. A big thing, if you're trying to play a Void Cascade, don't just get baited into fighting a Thrax in the corner. There's no real reason to be fighting these Thrax unless they are on top of an Exilizer. That's really how Cascade goes. If you are in a random corner fighting Thrax, you are throwing. The team needs you to kill those Thrax. So, that's basically it. Um, I'd highly recommend this if you're looking to do a Slash Proc Pistol. Now, there is an Elemental build I've run as well, but uh, I just didn't think it was anywhere near as effective. If I want to run an Elemental AoE build, like I was saying earlier, I would just run the Latum or something. So... Uh, if you want to quickly see that, I'll show it to you. But yeah, uh, in the future, I would I would still run this probably only on Ash. Um, additionally, dizzying rounds it gives so much status chance and it lets you do finishers. I was trying this mod out right here. Power drain, 100% chance for the next ability cast to have 100% or 50% ability strength. I don't think that works on this. It has to be an actual Parazon finisher, and this is just a normal finisher from Bronco. So for my initial test, it didn't seem like it worked. It would have been nice to give us more power strength than the clips. I'm also on Ash himself. I just throw on some random shards. I put up an energy max shards. So I never run out of energy. I didn't run out of energy in the mission. I'd say just put on some power strength shards here for more eclipse damage or duration shards for less recasting of eclipse and smoke stream. Uh, that's basically it. For the elemental build, I was running a, uh, I think it was a viral heat build or something. Yeah, viral heat. You can throw on corrosive too. No big deal. Um, the big thing here is that um, it's, it's just, it's going to take a personal preference play style. Do you want to run a weapon like this? Uh, I just like the fact it's the Bronco. The Bronco has never been something I've really cared about, but this changed it where it's like, okay, the Bronco actually has very high damage slash proc viability. So the way I look at it, that's pretty cool. It makes me look at a weapon I never was really looking at before, and it lets it do some really, really big damage, even with a non-Incardon shot. Probably should one-shot her. Okay, maybe not. 81,000. But yeah, guys, go out and enjoy this. Hope the video was fun and helpful. Uh, red crits everywhere. Four billion damage red crits everywhere. So I'll see you guys next time. Appreciate all the support. Take it easy. Peace.